Yes, sir, I'm cut from a different cloth. My texture is the best for a chinchilla. I've been ill and changed my life. But in 2008, you performed at Glastonbury, an iconic indie music festival in England, and Noel Gallagher from the rock band Oasis said some negative things in particular about rap closing this legendary festival. Tell me what was your reaction to his comments and describe how you felt when you hit the stage. It was just another one of those checkpoints. It felt like the DMX uh, hard knock life conversation all over again. You know, to have that conversation of, no, rappers can, we can tour together. We don't have to have an outside R&B act or anything like that mm -hmm. done. Then it was this whole thing of, People listen to music differently now. You know, that whole, that was the old guard holding on to something that they thought was dear. You know, we can't let any other type of music infiltrate this rock festival. But people don't listen to music like that no more, globally, anywhere. No one does that. Everyone's iPod is a list of all eclectic things. You know, you mm -hmm. have some rock, some blues, some jazz, some all type of things, whatever you like. You know, they try to keep this, uh, this thing segmented. Well, you're definitely highlighting that it's a generational thing. Yeah. It's a generation that just would not allow for music and culture to infiltrate what they already knew before. Yeah, it's just like a misconception of, of anything. I can have a misconception of anything I hear one or two words from. You know, if you hear buzzwords that are coming from hip-hop or anything like that, yeah. you say, that's what it's all about. It's very difficult to uh, fairly analyze something in a 30-second blip. You know, if I analyze a even Maya Angelou in the 30-second blip, there's some words and some things that she says this, you know, that I can, uh, I can misjudge who she is as a mm -hmm. person. And, you know, she happens to be the most incredible poet of our time. You know. David Stern, the commissioner of the NBA, came over to me and said, uh, Steve, is it possible that you can tell Jay-Z uh, to change clothes back again? And what he was referring to was that you had made a song called Change Clothes, and there was a gigantic seismic shift in sales for the NBA and NFL licensed apparel. You had the effect <laughs> on their business. Yeah. Did you know that that was going to take place when you released that song? I wasn't really conscious of it. It was really just more so how I felt at the time. It got to a point where everyone was walking around with these jerseys on, and we all just looked like the, the, the biggest basketball team in the world. And it was <laughs> like, okay, this thing is over now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just my, my elevation and growth. You know, I'm always trying to move forward and try to move to the next thing. I didn't have it in mind, like, I'm gonna say change clothes. You know, I would have bought, you know, I would have bought all the stock and all button-up shirts if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank you, man. All right, very good.